Yeah. Recording. Okay. Hey, everyone. Beautiful. I can see the recording. I just started. Hey, everyone. Okay, so this is uh, this is less funky than we were intending, but it's Richard's fault. It. It is. It is. <laughs> I don't know why this has happened. Uh, we tested last night. We had some live streams go out. We even had some live streams go out accidentally. So people got to hear me. People don't know what on. live streams mean. This is what we got set up. It's one of the things. It's not even what we're going to talk about this week. But we got uh, yeah. YouTube integration set up. Um, yeah. Connected with the swarm casting. And so the goal is that you can have a swarm cast. You can also just mirror it immediately out to YouTube, which can take care of hosting it and which can take care of providing a mass audience. So, yep. um, you know, if you do want to stream it to a thousand people or 2000 people, uh, it's an option. We're going to use it. We think for yep. a podcast too. Uh, yeah. It solves the just, yeah, I mean, the, how does it take you a year to put up a podcast? Cause it's up in five seconds. Right. So, yeah. Well, and it also gives people a simple way of having libraries and, and, to navigate the process of moving an audience across as well, mm -hmm. where, you know, um, if they're moving straight only to Cider, then if you've already got an existing audience, it's a lot to ask them to come to swarm casting. Whereas, uh, you know, if you've got YouTube as an intermediate, that gives us all that functionality for free. Mm -hmm. you know, and searchability. Free otherwise. Searchability and yep. the uh, search index. Exposure. For so. a couple of reasons. Anyway, that's the exciting tech feature we've been working on. Not this is not the announcement this week. That's just, yeah, something extra that we were going to mention, uh, and that yeah. we were hoping would exist. So instead, we're going to record this and we'll upload it afterwards. Let's get to yeah. not the meat, but why don't we start? We were hoping yeah. would watch on YouTube, but that's next week. Next week. Um, so I'm having trouble adjusting to that not being there. Sorry, I'll, I'll so, get that out of my uh, system shortly. The, the announcement we're going to do it at the end because we want to cover all of the stuff we've got to cover in the meantime. So first thing. Uh, today is going to be a tokenomics update. We got great news for everyone. You guys are going to love this. Yep. But before the good news, uh, one, discuss improvements to existing launches. This is week three. So we've yep. we've got crypto with ETH live on the network. Swarm casting, as people yep. can tell, is still working. Yep. Uh, any changes you want to? Because we kind of we keep working on stuff as people point out problems or there's usability reviews, which we love. Please. Well, I think there's, yeah, I mean, I think some of the big stuff is people have started using uh, swarm casting in all sorts of different ways. So we occasionally see Kekia's just swarm casting his cat for fun, mm. um, which is exactly why we built the internet in the first place. So I approve. Mm. But then we're also getting people asking for some use cases we hadn't seen before, like sharing media with friends while they're doing stuff. Mm. Um, and that's actually kind of crippled at the browser level, I'm guessing, you know, by the same people who tried to put DRM into video cables, like into the cables that connect your monitor to your computer. Like, it's not actually... Um, it's the audio capture. Logical. It's audio capture yeah. within the app. I'm wondering if that's related just to the way we go around the browser limitations on capturing the image. But yeah, mm. we got suggestions. I noticed G Powers, uh, Sato user, you, like he's posting Red Square. He's like, I thought it was because you guys are worried about copyright violations and that. And it's like it's a decentralized network. Like, yeah, networks. Not I mean, that's that's right. the one. Like the one thing we're not worried about because it's not like nothing's touching the service here. So it, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a permissionless network. No one is going to stop you. It's your machines and the machines that are joining. Um, yeah. So yeah, and that's yeah. That, that's kind of the that's kind of the point, right? Yeah. Like we're not. We're not in the business of, yeah, yeah. of controlling the your issue is that it went live last week. <laughs> right. So the solution is to help improve it or do like a usability review, like this is broken and we got to fix this. Uh, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've banged on about that before, but when David's saying usability review, um, what we really need and the most useful kind of feedback is someone coming in and saying, I was trying to use it for this. Right. So I was trying to use it to share media while I was chatting with my friends over a beer or I was trying to play, you know, a movie and get comments on it. And this worked and that didn't. Right. That then tells us like, OK, a this is a use case to pay attention to. People care about this. That's yeah. gold for us because then we, we know that. And B, we can work out how to solve for that problem, whether it's doing something slightly differently than what's anticipated that gets the result that makes that work or whatever. But that's that's gold for us if we can get a, a real walkthrough use case because, I mean, we're, we're play acting yeah. when we do it, right? We know one case. 
okay, I want to do a TED Talk style presentation, so I'll see if I can do that. Mm. Um, you know, I'll work, work out where that holds me up. But it's super hard as well if you're close to the project because you know where certain buttons are, so you don't stumble on that. Whereas, we, 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 like, don't, we don't need to talk about swarm casting. Indeed. We're still working on it. There are a bunch yeah. of improvements going in. <laughs> Um, I think there were some fixes to like audio channels getting mixed up in some subset that we fixed. Uh, yeah. Are there other issues, Richard? I mean, uh, no, I think it was a large, largely about the weirdnesses that happen when people drop in and out and sharing, like combining all the streams into one, et cetera. So okay. we had audio and occasionally people losing, you know, some subset of the audio, et cetera. Mm -hmm. that, that's been tightened up a lot. We do have some work that we're not going to talk about this week. It's amazing, but we're not talking about it because it's going to drop. <laughs> I've got quite um, a bit, actually, but yes. There's a tease. I know people can dig into GitHub if they want. Um, so the second that's thing, form casting, we're going to mention ETH as well, the, the crypto stuff. That's yeah. going to come along in the future. We're going to get more cryptos on. Uh, we yeah. still love usability review help there. The YouTube integration thing, we were going to talk about this next. The... Yep. Again, it's like we've got swarm casting, so it's decentralized peer to peer. A lot of people, they want the easy ability to save and store. And we know yep. that swarm casting is going to hit its limit at about 30 people, 40 people, because at a certain point, yep. if it's like weak network connections, as soon as you're four to five hops deep, it can get unstable. Um, that's yeah. dev work, uh, you know. Sp speaking of which, can people just hop in the chat and let us know they're there? Because I'd love to see that. Like, I can see a list of the the people who are following along, but it'd be good to just get a sense of like people actually hearing this. Perfect, thanks, Mark. Just mm -hmm. to get some chatter going in the in the chat and see, um, you know, well, Max, live get a sense of liveness. Thanks, I'm guys. Karada, Max, yeah. Hi guys. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing with uh, YouTube. The idea is that one, it's going to give you storage. So it's kind of a web three, web two hookup. I really like it because um, we want to be doing this podcast. Uh, and so this is one kind of a request, but it's not a, you know, it's not like immediately. Uh, it's not an immediate request. Um, we want to do a podcast. And one of the things like I've learned, and I think we both learned from watching people like Justin Bonds struggle dealing with the fundamentals is that people are actually maleducated on the fundamentals. Um, and so we want to uh, start a podcast that's talking about fundamentals of blockchain. Um, and we want to bring on people who are in the space um, and talk about what they're doing and treat it actually as an opportunity to educate people. So if you have suggestions on people, feel free to send them in, talk to us, because uh, we can line up a roster of people that we can talk to you and hopefully have a good show. So YouTube will be good for that because again, it's like podcast integration real time and we can have the site of channel and any shows we do. Yep. Super easy to put together, super easy to edit. They're just online. Um, anyone else can do a podcast too. Um, so we want YouTube integration for that. And then a bunch of things that we're not talking about that maybe people can think about because some of them are gonna drop, not immediately. Uh, a mm. bit later in the summer because we've got we've already got a bunch of stuff lined up, but more work and more uh, Sato features related to broadcasting and peer to peer uh, media distribution are coming. Yeah, you any thoughts on YouTube, Richard? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think it's also cool that it gives it'll give people that way. Like I was saying earlier, to kind of migrate over, right? Mm. You can bring you can start using this very quickly um, for uh, content creation in any way or you can bring an existing audience and i was chatting to dan earlier today just about games and doing some how to's and stuff and mentioning like it would be super easy to use this format to just play a game share the game in another window have that as the main focus and uh just go through like you know like dave could reteach me how to play twilight struggle and actually like step me through that no don't do that no no don't do that <laughs> and with reasons it would actually be a decent like how to get started with this thing video right so this sort of thing Someone's be super easy to do. I had a game with Light Shadow. He's like, "You're the best player in the world." I'm like, "Really? I'm not." Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently, we're intimidating. I think it's because like Saito TS is a snake pit. Everybody who plays there is at least pretty decently good. So yeah, you'll be watching. Yeah, well, it's good, and it, it, it's also just this like again the whole thing with no gatekeeping right we're not telling you what to do with this and we're not holding back on features because that's what we're going to make our premium subscriber base out of yeah. or whatever so yeah. if you want to just use this to record 
notes to yourself, you could. Like it worked yeah. perfectly well for just recording a short video. I mean, yeah. it was easier for me to check my mic levels with this than it was with like a native sound recorder app on my laptop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty I, cool. I do like the fact that my note for talking about YouTube, it says you may be watching this on YouTube. So this week you're not. Next week it should be fixed. Um, so next yeah. week, hopefully we're going um, to keep doing this. Um, yeah. And I'd, we'll have a yeah. variety of things to consume. So let's get on to the meat of meat and potatoes. We want to talk about yep. economics. Um, and I think before we tell people what the changes are, maybe it's good to take a quick walkthrough of yep. what the tokenomics, not were in the past, but the commitments that we've made so that people can see the straight line. Uh, you know, we've got an update. There's no surprises. Um, yep. Richard, do you want to take this? I'm happy to play second fill. Uh, yeah, and no, I think we can, I mean, we basically try and bring people's minds back to the last time we, we spoke about this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the big the big news last time was we, we did a burn, so you know, we removed um, some token supply. Um, and we set out reasoning for that. And we sort of just walked people through our take on things like, you know, the ad faucet, which had been a very mm -hmm. early concept we'd held and where we were seeing that um, playing a role in the roadmap. And that's really what it's all about is all these decisions are just to aimed at making sure that we're supporting the ability for Cyto to get to and move through those stages, you know, that there's the right incentive mix mm -hmm. and, you know, token uh, availability, et cetera, so that people can start, mm. you know, using things and building things yeah. uh, in the right way. Right. So, uh, so we're on a curve. The curve is the curve towards adoption. Um, yep. There's the wiki page on tokenomics. I don't know if it's updated yet. If it's not, it's going to be updated by the end of the day today with all of the information yep. we're going to give you today. Um, yep. Let's maybe go over quickly some of the commitments uh, that we've made. We've got an ATR subsidy that's happening. Um, so some of the network incentives as tokens migrate from ERC-20 onto the mainnet, people will be able to earn uh, a little bit of interest. That's taken care of. We've got the token persistence. Curve. We had we are actually since the last to tokenomics update, we've actually done the first issuance under that, mm -hmm. right? So that's actually the, you know, a commitment was yeah. made and has been seen through. So the first round of that has happened. Yeah. So uh, I think the next one's due in October. Right. So that's a commitment we've made. We've got the token persistence curve. We're moving along it. Um, I think part of this update is sharing that we're officially down to 175,000. Or something like that. Yeah, so just about that, yeah. We are happy to confirm that the network does support 175K. Uh, I think in yep. code wise, we're actually a bit below it now, but um, so yep. we're right on the curve. So that's part of uh, the adjustments that we're making. Um, uh, we So that's the release curve. We mentioned earlier, uh, personally, I think that Cyto was wildly undervalued. Uh, we mentioned earlier that we believe that the market price, the fair market price, should be at least a cent. Um, and we think as people figure out what's going on, that's going to happen. But um, we also mentioned that we would do things like uh, pursue burns to pursue price stability. Because one of the things that we want long term on the network is we want the token stability to be able to incentivize usage. Stuff that is new. We've made a lot of progress with... Uh, how should we call it? Low, low, low fee trend, low, low fee throughput. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail on that today because we want to talk about this in a later week, uh, specifically when we talk about NFTs and update you on that. But one of the big changes that's happening, not a big change, one of the changes that's happening is we are seeing more and more of a viable roadmap with adoption that doesn't require subsidization. And I think the community can see that where we are seeing people just coming on to use Saito video chat. Uh, and we're seeing people come on to use the games. And we're seeing, you know, like Red Square's got issues with decentralized moderation. You know, we can kind of see the problems that need to be solved, but we're moving towards this world where we're increasingly seeing actual genuine utility. And we see a roadmap for growing that, um, which reduces from a dev perspective, it reduces the priority of things like the ad faucet for us in-house because we don't think that we are going to need to buy as much transaction flow as our previous models of network growth have gone, uh, have kind of assumed, you know? 
And one of the results of that is that actually, I, I mean, earlier on, one of the issues we have with people who fought cytotokonomics is they don't generally understand that we've got this big section called network incentives, which is the equivalent of the mining subsidy in Bitcoin. It's designed to be spent if you can use it to induce growth in a way that leads to people spending more in fees, the token price going up. And so we have, you know, we've had a bunch of futters and around that. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is that because the low because utility is growing and transaction volume on the network and, and usability is growing, we're not as dependent on that section. Um, and so that's good news for us in tokenomics, and that's going to be reflected. The second thing is that we had very early on, we had things like strategic partners, a section that has disappeared. And that was designed for if you are a company that is building on the network or you are an application developer, yada, 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 and you need tokens to use the network. That's what those are. For. And uh, we've replaced this. There's now part of the things that we will talk about in more detail later, there is going to be a requirement. Uh, we're not sure if it's going to be on a falling curve or how to handle it like long term, it might be a reducing curve. But there's a requirement to basically identify tokens that you have if you're producing a lot of blocks at a low transaction fee throughput. Uh, and what this is doing basically is it is in a permissionless Sato setting without a closed group of stakers, without closure, uh, we're forcing people who are who might want to attack the network to identify that they've got a bunch of Cyto tokens uh, with the goal of, if someone does uh, act stupidly enough to do a joyriding attack, we can strip them of those tokens and we can fork and protect the network. So this is what Ethereum talks about when they talk about social flashing. We're getting the Sato equivalent of that going in. What you're gonna see on the new tokenomics is that there's a sizable chunk of uh, the tokenomics, which is now allocated to that. Uh, we call it the block producer block up because that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and we're communicating, I'm communicating this just directly because we often deal with FUD where people think that people think that because the tokens are in circulation or not in circulation, it means that the project is dumping on them or something. And I think citizens know at this point that that's not true and we've got credibility on that. If you're looking at the tokenomics, that's that's what you're seeing in the block producer block up category. Yeah. It's our ability to go to people who want to be deploying applications and say, well, we will provide you with the tokens that you need to produce blocks so that you're not at threat from slow social slashing under certain conditions. For instance, you give us escrow of this or you make some kind of credible legal commitment that you're not going to be dumping on us, you know, that sort of thing. Um, presentation? Yeah, that's what yeah, we're realize we've actually diagram this up so i might as well share it so that's works, the so. that's the 7.1 percent down at the bottom the other big shift you're going to notice is that we're shifting out of this uh this two-phase approach to talking about tokenomics um where okay here's the erc 20 tokenomics and here's the main yep. tokenomics because migration is live uh token persistence is live and we find it confuses people you know people are like when's when's the real network and it's like the real network's up um and so we're shifting to a simpler where people can see, well, this is the amount that's in public circulation, and this is the amount that isn't. Uh, and one of the things I really like, uh, a lot of this is, uh, one of the things I really like about this new curve is I think it, or the chart, is it shows much more clearly actually the reality, which is that the unallocated tokens yeah. are pretty much about 25.7% of the network. Um, so that's the stuff that can come out on mainnet. Uh, as we need it to be incentivizing growth. And I think the other big yep. change you'll see is that if you add up the total amount of tokens, you'll see it's 7 billion now, not 8. Um, yep. And that's just following the commitment that we made, I think, about eight months ago. Because eight months ago, yep. I think we had a space and we said to people that we're going to watch the price. And if we think the token price is too weak, we're going to do a judicious burn. Uh, so that's what we're yep. doing. And... As eight months ago, we're going to be repeating this in another eight months. And we're going to repeat this in yep. eight months after that. Um, which is So not specifically necessarily another bird, but reviewing the situation and seeing where that yeah, is. I if, mean, it's, 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 if it's the wrong thing to do, we won't do it. But it's... Yeah, I mean, for me, yeah. it's, uh, for me, it's indicating... The message I want people to take away from this is that this is a fulfillment of a promise and a pledge that we made eight, eight months ago. Yep. 
And I want people to understand the reason that this is done, because we're going to get a lot of fudders and shitheads who are like, oh, you should do this. You should do this. Why not this? Why not that? And the answer is because read the roadmap. Um, the roadmap is what is the goal of the token? Uh, how do we need the incentives to work? And this is executing the strategy that we've got for that. And I think people who understand Saito and who want to be building on the network and uh, helping should be able to look at the tokenomics and you guys should be able to see a straight line between what you're seeing today. Uh, yep. What we talked about eight months ago. Or and I, I, think it, it, I think it bears repeating. Um, yeah, as, and it comes from a realism uh, and a genuine in, mm -hmm. intent to build something real here that the roadmap for Saito isn't a laid out like a marketing plan or something. It's mm -hmm. not, we do this, then we do this, then we do this. It's an analysis of the phases the project has to go through to become dominant yeah and we're doing everything we can to accelerate that along and that's part of what you're seeing with say mm -hmm. for instance this burn move away from concepts like the token forcer which we don't see as filling the place but also the hard work we and, and largely sanka have put into what david was talking about earlier with mm -hmm. the block production lockup um where that gives us it, it jolts us forward quite a bit in terms of being able to have a secure network that could have people transacting much more freely in the native token in a way that is secure and we're not just putting them at risk. So yeah. this is a kind of an attempt at a holistic set of things that we can do to guide the project and accelerate its path towards, you know, a big adoption, but also security and also, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of general usability. Yeah. So I'm sure people can dig into this. We're going to get the update on the wiki. Uh, if you're listening to this and you hold Saito, congratulations. You are now 12.5% yep. richer in Saito. Uh, yep. We're happy to take questions because this is uh, kind of a podcast recording. I don't know how we want to do this. I yep. think this is the meat and potatoes. Uh, do people want to ask questions maybe in Saito chat? And we can... Yeah, I think let's... Let's give ourselves, we're, we're wanting to commit also to keeping these things uh, shorter, partially to, to make them more digestible, et cetera. Mm -hmm. you know, if people hop on a video, especially, you know, something like in a list of YouTube videos and they see that it's 45 minutes long, they're less likely to click. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's try and restrict it to if there are questions, giving it about five minutes. So if people can get any questions up into chat in the next minute yeah. or two, um, we'll ded dedicate if maybe you got, you know, if the next four or five you got questions. Now's your opportunity. Put in the chat. Get them into the Swarmcast chat. Uh, if there are no questions, that's fine. We'll terminate in about a minute or two and go back to coding because we're yep. busy. Um, but if there are, we'll deal yep. with them. And then when we've done them, we'll we'll finish. So now's your chance. Yep. Thanks, Mark, for clarifying that. Mm. Uh, I'm still wondering what exactly I tested overnight. It, must have, oh, it was 3 a.m. Because <laughs> we got 37 people on the Swarmcast. This is actually pushing. Yeah, the it seems good uh, for the, the amount of. There are people talking about having issues with their peers and stuff, but we'd anticipated mm. that past 30. So the fact that 37 people is mm. is viable seems seems a good start. I mean, it's, it's the YouTube thing, too. It's like if you're going to be broadcasting to 2,000 yeah. people, you're dealing with a network where a lot of people are going to be six, seven hops deep. Um, okay, question. How does Swarmcast and video call directly relate to the Sado consensus mechanism? Um, I don't really know what that question is asking. It's kind of, it's, Sado is a PKI network app. Uh, it's yeah. a PKI network. And the things that we're doing here are applications that are using a deployed Swarm community in which everyone has a key, public, private, and they can communicate. Yeah. And you can fall back to coordinating uh, on-chain and off-chain behavior on-chain. Yep. So the answer is it's an app. Um, yep. It doesn't necessarily. Yeah, have I think the consensus. The, the answer. Oh, there's a new question, but mm -hmm. um, is there a way we can show a live dashboard where people can check the stats of interest related to activity on Sato blockchain? So um, we do. We do have some available. One of the issues here, of course, is that we're not tracking people you know we're very definitively not google analyticsing people um so what we're tracking is you know uh unique users is just unique keys we don't know if that's one person you know using an inco a different incog every time they play mm. um but yeah uh, it's one of the things that we're meaning to get back to is we do actually have a small project in place to make a tight subset of that information visible publicly um mm. but with all the other things the team are doing it kind of can um 
take a back seat sometimes, but yes, uh, it is something it's, we're working on. I mean, it's, it's a useful opportunity to remind people because I see a lot of people, they come into, they see things like Swarmcast. And I think people are beginning to realize that Cyto is such a powerful network. And like, it's kind of like an OS in the browser in a way, because stuff like Swarmcasting, it really is, uh, it's hitting the ball out of the park compared to projects that are much more massively funded and have massive development teams, you know? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people that come in and they're like, okay, well, I see this, let's do this, let's do this. Um, you know, if you're a developer, come in and help with that. Um, we've got a ton of stuff on our plate. I think one of the things that I really like about Cyto Summer is every week is something different. You know, like this week it's tokenomics, but we're still, it's like, well, we're going to talk about YouTube because we got it done anyway. Like YouTube integration with Swarmcasting is not a big enough deal to be a week in Cyto Summer. So we're mentioning it here before we talk about the tokenomics update. Um, yep. But yeah, so something like that stats, there's a, there's a block explorer. There's no reason that somebody can't, who wants to help. If you want to help, you want this. Yeah, the chain is open. <laughs> uh, come help us with the blockchain explorer. Uh, if you run into problems, yep. hit us up, we'll help you. Um, and that also tells us that there's a real need for it. I think yep. from the dev perspective, one of the big challenges is telling the difference between people who are suggesting things because they think it's a feature that they can hype and because they yep. think it's a feature that they can use. And for a project our size, we've got to focus on stuff that's going to generate real utility because we can't afford to be wasting time on things that are yep. just hype, but there's no substance there, you know? Yeah. Yep. Next question. I know uh, something about NFTs. Yeah, but you're going to have to wait till uh, we drop something that's new and exciting that's related to yeah. This I mean, also just for, for people, you know, we do have to make decisions at times as well. So we've been pushing hard on the block security at low mm. throughput because that's also a prerequisite, right? Yeah. It's if people can fork the network too easily, your NFTs aren't secure. So yep. those are the considerations going into that. Yeah. Um, will node runners be able to host nodes specific to Swarmcast? Um, yeah, I mean, the system's modular. You could create a Swarmcast specific node if you wanted to without Red Square or whatever, or you could spin your version of all of them up. Uh, the project's open. We're hoping that the it is a bit Lego blocky and that people can build mm -hmm. what they want with it. So there's no nothing stopping people from doing that. Hit us up if you have a use case and you're interested yeah. in doing it. Um, I mean, there will also be more announcements in summer about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Te technically, what I'll add is because it's a PKI network application, any PKI network could technically do this. You could bootstrap something like this on Ethereum. The reason you don't is one, the network incentives, two, the transaction fees throughput, the difficulty of adding data to the blockchain. And so what we see is we often see, we've seen a couple of times, people clearly have seen what Cyto is doing and they've copied it. And yep. generally, they haven't followed through with execution because it's a hype thing on other chains. People aren't actually focused yep. on really building it. Um, but the second is that when they do it, they do it in this permissioned manner where one node owns and controls things. And that's fine, but that's not what we're building. So yes, you can yep. do it. You can do whatever you want. Um, and you know, hopefully a lot of these value-added services, like if someone hooked in Ethereum payments to this and they set up an OnlyFans or something on Saito, you can do that. That might be something that you actually... Language education is the model we go with, not OnlyFans, but anyway. Yeah, you know, uh, it's an example that everyone <laughs> understands. Um, yeah. But if someone did that, um, then there's no reason you couldn't run that application on a single server. Um, yep. maybe there's a way that you want to be doing monetization that connects. The reason to be running it on Saito is you've got everything needed to build the application kind of deployed into the browser. You benefit from the ecosystem yep. and you've got all of these Sato apps that just can be bundled directly into it. Um, yep. so you don't need to build the video syncing. You don't need to be building the payment layer. You don't need to be building the content yep. sharing, uh, social media, decentralized moderation. Yep. Next um, question, how does Swarmcast relate to Golden Ticket Payslip? Uh, it doesn't. It's an app on the network. Consensus is just yeah. coming along without... Consensus doesn't care what apps you're using. Consensus yeah. just cares what's the fee attached to the transaction, how much data does it have, and how do I divide that up? Yeah. So I think the the biggest connection there is something David mentioned earlier, which is just that if you tried doing this on Ethereum, 
if you had a bad connection, you'd end up spending $700 just staying on the call, right? Because you need to occasionally make a transaction to get some information from the network and it's way too expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, Saito makes this possible on a, you know, in a decentralized way where you don't either have a company having to sponsor it and therefore drag money out of it somehow, or, um, you know, just have it be thunderously expensive like it would be on a proof of stake network. So yeah. that, that's really the link to consensus there. Example, let's say someone wanted to do something like this on Bitcoin.com, right? Yeah. So Roger Veer is like, I own Bitcoin.com. I want Bitcoin to have this functionality. Roger Veer is now paying all of the costs of technical infrastructure out of pocket. And when people use, the, when they make transaction fees, uh, Roger yeah. Veer either has to figure out a way to hoard those transactions to eat part of the fee, yeah. or he has to pay all of the server costs out of pocket because he doesn't earn anything from the transaction fees. So yeah. this is what Saito is fixing, right? Like a lot of people, I, I can see sometimes people will say, oh, it's like unlimited scalability on Saito. That's not mm -hmm. true. We've got the same, like, theoretical limits of the speed of light that other people do. And so like when you hit a certain point, well, then you do look at sharding or you do look at cross, yeah. uh, you can look at cross chain uh, bridges. You can have multiple SATO networks or a sharded mechanism. You know, we're going to let them figure that out because we don't, you don't want to hit that point of having multiple chains until you are actually at those physical limits. And what yeah. SATO does, the way SATO solves this is we say, look, you're not going to hit those points if you take all of the money and you give them to miners or you give them to stakers. That's what's limiting you with the volunteer network. So it's not that there's something technically that's special happening. What's happening is we're building the apps because we have confidence in the economic model. And we know that the things that people are complaining about that are practically limiting scale on these other networks is that they're every time they run into a problem, they need to jack up fees and they're still stuck with volunteers providing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like this, this is the version of Bitcoin.com where Roger Veer hosts Bitcoin related video streaming. Yep. And there's a business model in the box yeah. and he can't monopolize it because that same business model is in the box for you. And so yes. if Roger Veer starts closing Zoom, well, I can go to another node and I can use their Zoom too. So yeah. and uh, I take all my software. I don't need to do anything special. So I think that's the, other, that's the reason for the apps from the other way around is that you're constantly using apps that are very well put together and incredibly well engineered, yeah. but they're engineered primarily for the benefit of the company and then secondarily for users. So if there's a feature that loses the money that users would like, you don't get it. It's just a simple yeah. fact of economics because their their job is to make money out of selling the experience rather than uh, by providing infrastructure. And that's what we can flip on its head and make so different by using something like Cyber. Well, I mean, it's also why people don't think about it, right? Because people have normalized and internalized the block reward. And so a lot of this stuff mm. is people who hold those tokens making early investments for network effects and hype because usage drives up value. They've, they've got this uh, seniorage income. Uh, they mm. want the value of that to go up. And it's just, it's not a sustainable basis for having the internet, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that's what we're fixing. Um, I think we should try and wind up at the kind of 35 minute ish mark. So quickly on the question from GPF uh, around outreach and stuff, uh, what David mentioned earlier is probably the best thing. We've got some heavy hitters lined up uh, to feature on a podcast with us, but if there's anyone else you can think of you would like us to talk to or you'd like them to come on a, on a podcast we put together with Saito Swarm, if, if we get the right people, that, that can become a thing. So that's probably the biggest thing in, in that space. Another call out to like, make that help make that happen um i feel like the next question if we're going quickly is can backwards I, can i tack yeah. can I tackle the speaker at debate events here's something you guys don't see that's happening um as a result of mm. swarm casting and gaming the gaming discussion with eth put us on the radar of a couple of people we do have an invitation i think for a web3 conference we're going to evaluate it we're going to take a look like what's there is it worth going mm. is it not worth going uh, we have a Twitter space invitation tomorrow, I think, with uh, Web3 Summit. Um, we got hit up by uh, an influencer. This, I mean, this is the craziness of the state of the space. It's a Web3 gaming influencer who hit us up. And he was actually really effusive about Saito. And he was asking a technical question that doesn't actually have anything to do with Saito because he's looking in the space and he's like, I know you guys are legit because I came and I played Settlers of Saito. And this is a legit game. 
compared to everything else in the space, which is hype and nonsense. And we're looking at this and we're saying, well, like it's totally absurd. The like the Web3 dot gaming fund, the open source game engine, what's happening with Twilight Struggle, what's happening with Realms, what's happening with Here I Stand. Yeah. Uh, we still have the Awesome stuff going on. There is so much that's exciting that's happening with gaming that people don't know about. And one of the reasons they don't know about it is because it's a hype uh, bullshit clusterfuck where that's what people are doing. People aren't building utility. And I think it's going to be increasingly clear why our strategy is building utility. But the point is that Saito Summer, the reach out, the promotion you guys are doing, we're seeing a result of it. The result yeah. is that we are seeing more inbound interest. We are seeing people actually wake up to the fact that, wait a minute, there's this thing here. It's like they, they, they learn about Saito for the first time, but they realize there's actually something substantial here. So we are we are excited about this. We are we are getting more uh, inbound interest with this. We're going to evaluate it. We don't we don't yeah. want to get in hype announcements of oh we're going to do this. We're not going to do this. But if you well, are going to reach out, if you've been helping, thank you. Um, know yeah. that it's making a difference. Yeah, I think the utility and the awareness of the utility builds up over time, right? Whereas hype fades as soon as it's happened. Yeah, and that's the big difference with if you're fighting if it's you know you're fighting a much much bigger much uh more aggressive less scrupulous uh you know set of competitors then that's what you've got to do you've got to like take a long view and a tactically smart yeah. one rather than just try and play the game and lose at it and also lose generally because it's not sustained it doesn't yeah. get you anywhere in the long term and it's also one of the reasons one of the things i think is good about side of summer so if you're if you're promoting and you're like uh helping people it's i mean it's helping people understand what's happening in crypto and that it's not just mm. basically a shit show uh cyto is here we're doing mm. stuff you can come and use it um i had a conversation this morning with some academics who i think are somewhat marginalized on the transaction fee mechanism debate and i think it was a really interesting conversation for them because i think we actually convinced them of something fundamental and uh you know this is it's just another thread this is the Theoretical, you should understand this about consensus. If you understand routing work, you will see the problem with what people at like the A16Z theorists, they're just wrong. It's not like it's not, let's argue about it. It's they're fucking wrong. They have not read Paul Samuelson. They have not read Leonitz Hurwitz. These are the Nobel Prize winning economists who are writing about how to optimize the prices of things that are being produced. They're writing about this in the blockchain space. They don't know what they're doing. This is going to become increasingly clear. We've got so we've got theory happening. We've got practical applications happening. Um, you know the outreach yeah. uh, with crypto conferences. Well, I think the other the other thing to get people excited a bit there is when when those when that conversation changes and those those analysts that places like A16Z do have start seeing where they've been trapped in the POS kind of mindset, et cetera, that that's injecting what we're saying directly into incredibly important places in the industry, right? In a way that you, we, we can't by just, you know, creating delicate hype or whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, I think it goes straight to the heart. We started the conversation and we mentioned like, you know, we talked about YouTube podcasting uh, in this, you know, because people know that Justin Bonds has a podcast with us at some point. It's going to come out maybe. Who gives a shit? We know what's in it. I and just, we know yeah. that, like, if you listen to it, I think one of the things that's going to become clear is that Justin actually didn't do the work to understand Saito coming in. And he had his own agenda to talk about governance. And, you know, that's fine. Um, the point is, that's the sort of thing that's going to flip. And that's the thing that is flipping. Um, that was the really interesting yeah. thing for me about the academic discussion, because it wasn't about Saito, it was about theory. And then at the end of they're like, well, is this problem solvable? And I'm like, well, I think we theoretically solved it. But that wasn't the conversation. And I think what's going to happen, and the reason we're doing this multi-thread uh, outreach with apps, Saito Summer, with theory, uh, you know, push out a paper, doing outreach. The reason outreach is so important is because this is what is actually starting to flip things. When we're getting Web3 yeah. gaming influencers who are like, wait a minute, uh, my entire industry is not shit because there's this project that's actually producing legitimate software. Um, and I think that's the, that's the shift we're going to have. And it's the shift that's underway with Summer. Yeah. So if you've been doing reach out, yeah. thank you. Um, and hopefully that, yeah. is, that yes stuff is happening. Uh, we will update it as we make commitments yeah. to it. But yeah. if you are participating in outreach, please do, because it does give us opportunities. 
Um, and it does help yeah. accelerate this process because, of, you know, yeah. the point's going to come where people are going to like on Justin's case, people are going to look at that and they're going to wonder what the fuck, how could you do a podcast with Saito, not understand routing work, be told it solves a fundamental problem, not bother to do the research on that and then sit on the show for a fucking year. It's just absurd. Hmm. But and like the A16Z guys as well, what's going to happen is academia is going to flip and they're going to look at those guys and they're going to be, why are these people trying to understand an economic problem? And they're not, they don't even, they don't even read the fundamental economics from the 1950s talking about public goods. Hmm. There's the sea change coming. And I mean, you guys can see it. Cyto Summer is helping us. The reach out is helping us. So thank you. It really is. Cool. We said we'd keep it to 40-ish minutes. I think there was one last question there about epochs and 60-minute swarmcast. It's it's the other way around. An epoch is is few hundred thousand blocks. It's weeks. So at massive, massive scale, an epoch is probably not going to be shorter than a day. Um, yeah. It's one of the reasons we want people to understand because there are questions like, as we grow, can we shorten the length of an epoch, um, or are yeah. we trapped keeping it constant? Yeah. All right. I think uh, so there's a feature request there, but uh, we'll just say it sounds like a good one and uh, Liv, don't need to answer that and try and wind up. Um, thank you, everyone, mm. for uh, joining in. I'll be around the channels for a bit now, both working out what happened with YouTube and also um, hitting people up with some just requests for feedback. It'd be great to hear from people about how their experience was. Uh, mm. We've got 43 people in, I think, at the moment, which would you know be good to find out uh how that's gone for everyone hopefully it's not like two guys with 16 connections each uh we don't think it is uh no no i can tell i know who some of these people are Mm. thank thank you everyone and next week and uh we're hoping to have this on youtube too which will be good for sure um i might do a public test just to prove that i wasn't making things up yeah (laughs) anyway thanks guys um we'll post on we'll post on twitter and we'll post in Sado TG when the wiki is updated uh, for anyone who yeah. wants to come in on details in what we talked about today. Cool. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you.